everyone, I'm Trevor and today we're at Disney California Adventure for the start of the Food and Wine Festival for 2024. We're going to show you all the food booths and try a couple of the items, so let's get going. We're at Disney California Adventure without the kids! <laughs> We're here for food and wine. I'm not excited about not being with kids. We're here for food and wine festival, and uh, we do this every year. Just Amy and I come up for food and wine. Now, the first thing that you want to find on any food festival is one of these little stanchions. Now, it's turned around at the moment, but if you come around here, you can actually see that there are these booklets hanging from the side of the box. Grab one of these booklets because these are going to be your food tasting passports. They have pictures and descriptions of all the food items. There should be a map in here as well somewhere um, that will tell you exactly where all these items are. This is so helpful at any food festival at Disneyland. Our first order of business when you arrive at Disney California Adventure for Food and Wine Festival is to come over here to Soren because Soren over California is back. And it's such an attraction, uh, such a novelty that it's back for food and wine that the line gets pretty long right away. Now, this doesn't look too bad, but it does say it's a 25 minute wait, probably because first thing in the morning, they may only be running one side. And so usually this is a rope drop destination for us. It's about 8.15, so a little bit late. If you're not right here at the beginning, uh, you will have a tiny bit of a wait for this ride. Usually up until about 9 a.m., it stays at a 10 minute wait. So to see it 25, just 15 minutes after park opening, definitely a bit busier because of California. Now, as we're walking around, something else to be looking out for is that these churro carts have a specialty seasonal churros for the Food and Wine Festival. I don't think I want that one, but maybe you do. And it's here at Willie's Churros. All around Disney California Adventure, every churro cart will have a different seasonal churro. And we are beginning our food overview back here at Hollywood Studios. And first up, we have Earth Eats. If you're wondering why I'm doing it at this time of the morning, it's so that I can just walk straight up to the menu here and have nobody in the way, and I'm not in their way. That works for both of us. Impossible chicken parm bites, impossible beef stroganoff, watermelon cucumber mojito, and a corksicle stemless flute. And that's just like a uh, souvenir cup. And then you can purchase like what types of drinks you want. And directly opposite that booth is LA style. And over here we have a carnitas style pork belly, Baja style fish taco, spicy strawberry cocktail. And we're gonna see this corksicle thing on a lot of different booths. We won't mention it every single time. Uh, if I had to pick one item from this booth that I'm most interested in, it's gonna be the pork belly. The pork belly itself sounds really good, but the mac salad, ooh, I am definitely interested in trying that. Now, as we did an about face to head back towards that thoroughfare we told you about, there's another churro cart, so I thought I would show you what churro is available here. This time we have a cannoli churro. It is sip and saver eligible. We'll explain sip and saver in a minute. We're gonna get a pass for that later, and we'll show you what that means. Now we are on that main road here, and there are two booths that we're actually not going to be able to get up super close to right now. They're both behind this wall off to the left. And those are going to be golden dreams. Now we will show you a closer up picture of the menu here on your screen, but um, we have a frozen old fashioned, which is kind of like a popsicle sort of thing, ice cream bar. It sounds really interesting. For beverages, they have a blueberry pancake cold brew, a peach cobbler cocktail, and a fig matcha latte. Next up, we do have Nuts About Cheese. This is also behind the wall. And here we have a barbecue pulled pork mac and cheese. Mmm, I think I'm gonna have to get that. The Mickey-shaped macaroon. Now, this is a classic. This is something that they always have. It is super tasty. And a peanut butter and jelly whiskey shake. No Thank you. Booth number five is right outside of those closed doors and it is Uncork California. Here we're gonna find a raspberry almond cake, rosé margarita, and then they got a whole bunch of other alcoholic beverages here that we're not gonna highlight, but you can take a look at. On our way to the next food booth, we come across this little market which sells food and wine festival merchandise. And right up here, I see the spirit jersey. It looks really nice this year. Pretty classic. Of course, as is typical with most Disney merchandise, there is no price because they want you to get attached to the item and then you find out the price when you're buying it. Ooh, look at this lounge fly. This is pretty unique. It's got all of the different food booths on it. And here's the Magic Key t-shirt for this year. 
And the price is $34.99. We also found some food and wine festival unique pins. So these are the food booths and then there's Chef Mickey there himself. Across from Wine Country Trattoria, we have Delish. Here you're gonna find the Carbonara Garlic Mac and Cheese, which is something that I really want. The Olive Oil Cake, Huckleberry Citrus Cooler, and oh, another Corksicle. The Olive Oil Cake? That sounds kinda interesting. Interesting in a good way or a bad way? I don't know. The rest of the description sounds good, but the whole title of olive oil in it, I don't, I don't know. Right next door is Garlic Kissed. <laughs> and here we have that ever popular grilled top sirloin that we will have to get again this year to see if it lives up to the hype from last year, as well as a guava lychee mule. Now this is it. These are the only two items here. The next thing we want to draw to your attention is the full-on marketplace. Last time you saw a little pop-up tent, this is the main marketplace that is right across from Ariel's. And here we see some mini ears and they've got the Avocado Time logo up here. These are quite possibly the most expensive mini ears I've seen to date in the park. The price just keeps going up. There's a few other items here that you can check out. We're not gonna look at each and every one of them. Now this next booth is a bit hidden. A lot of people just wanna keep walking that way, but we need to turn and go down this direction first. And down here, you'll find Peppers Caliente. Here you're gonna find the Chili Rileno Empanada, the Shrimp Papas Locas, and the Cantarito Style Paloma. Over in front of Ariel's, you'll find California Craft Brews. And this booth has a cheeseburger bowl, which sounds really good, a s'mores caramel tart, a frozen manganada beer slush, and a couple of other alcoholic beverages that once again, I'll let you take a look at, but we're not gonna highlight. And the last official food booth is outside of the Golden Zephyr. It's Clucka Doodle Moo. Here they have cheese pizza flavored wings, barbecue beef brisket slider, which I feel like we've gotten in the past, so we probably won't this time, but I remember it being pretty good. And then a kiwi apple lemonade. Oh, also, a tangerine tiki cocktail. Next to Corn Dog Castle, we have another churro cart, and this time we have the spice shortbread churro, which comes with a cookie butter dipping sauce. And now we have just one more place to go, and that's the Paradise Garden Grill back here, because they have seasonal food festival items as well. Now there is so much more to do at the Food and Wine Festival. There's lots of music, show times, things like that. You can check it out on these stanchions. They'll tell you what's going on where. We don't really check out any of the live music, really ever. We also don't focus on alcoholic beverages, so we're not gonna go over to there to the festival beer garden to see what they're hanging up, but uh, know that that's another location where you can get some alcohol. And here it is, all the way in the back. Well, uh, this is different. They, I mean, they have some items here, but there's no logos saying they're sip and savor eligible. We have the Sissic Burrito, the Tacos Gobernador, Chicken Masakan, and a loaded baked potato. Well, Amy noticed that there are, there's a logo here next to the tacos and the cheesecake, which we haven't talked about the cheesecake yet. And that logo says it's sip and savor past eligible. Then we did notice that they are listed right down here at the register. But in times past, they have been up on the board. There's been a logo. So that's a change this year. And here's the other menu board. There's that pistachio cheesecake for $6.75. Sounds pretty good to me. I love pistachio ice cream at Spaghetti Factory. And then we have the pineapple melon cocktail. And the last churro cart with a seasonal churro is Senor Buzz Churros. Here they have an unforgettable binga bong churro with a shortbread cookie, sugar, and strawberry jelly. We came back to this little booth after 9.30 because that's when they told us that we could purchase the sip and savor pass. And here we go. Looks a little different this year. We did not do Lunar New Year. And I guess this started with Lunar New Year. They used to have pull taps along the outside of the card. And now it is just a barcode there on the back. And so that's interesting. That's new. This is the eight item sip and savor pass. And I guess they have a four one. And here on this card, my guess is that the blue one is gonna be the four. Now, um, pass members do get a discount, a small discount. It doesn't say what our discount was, but we paid $56 for this as magic key holders. I just asked and they said without the discount, it's 61. So we save $5, not a whole lot, but it's still a savings. At $56, that means each of our items costs about $7 a piece. 
So that means any item that we buy that actually costs more than $7, we'll be saving money on. Usually it works out to saving up one item. So after you buy eight items, if you save about a buck, a buck 50 each one, you may save between eight to $12 overall buying the Sip and Saver Pass, as opposed to buying the items a la carte, which is why we recommend the Sip and Saver Pass. Any day you can save a dollar at Disney is a good day. Now the food festival booths don't open until 10.30 and it's 9.40, so we have some time to kill, which means we're gonna ride some rides. And Ariel's right here is the first one that we're gonna do, cause well, there's nobody in line. It's 10.30 now and we ordered our food. We ordered all eight items at this booth, even though they're all from different booths. You can absolutely do that, save some time, so you don't have to pay each and every time if you know that you're gonna get multiple items. And uh, it ended up being $70 and 50 cents before we used our pass and our pass was 56 so we saved 14 dollars and 50 cents with that sip and saver pass which is excellent and uh, now we're going to get our first item and of course that first item is going to be here at california craft brews and here it is the first item is the cheeseburger bow with thousand island dressing pickle and tomato relish i don't know how i feel about the pickle I'm not a big pickle person. But I am most curious about this item because they have a cheeseburger bow at Walt Disney World. It's the Tuli Canteen in Animal Kingdom that I absolutely love and I wanna see how this compares. Amy's gonna have the first go of this. I already made a mess, in case you can't tell. <laughs> yeah. Needs two bites, folks. It tastes like I'm eating a McDonald's burger in a soft, fluffy cloud bun. Thing. It's actually pretty good. It's not overpowering of pickles like I was expecting. And I actually like Thousand Island dressing. So I don't know what you're going to think of this because you're not a big salad dressing person. However, it's kind of like, you know, the animal style in and out sauce. So you might actually like it. But I have. This is good so far. I wiped the pickles off because I don't like pickles, but there's still Thousand Island dressing on here. So we'll see how it goes. Very good. I can't really remember what the one at Animal Kingdom tastes like, but I feel like this one is better. There was the right combination of meat to fluff. The, the you know, sometimes when you get something like this, the dryness of whatever it comes in can overpower the flavor of the meat. And that doesn't happen here. Uh, the meat's got plenty of flavor. In fact, it's packed with flavor. I think the thing that I appreciate the most about this one is that it's, it's wet. Like it's not too dry, if that makes sense that the dressing on there and i also feel like the meat itself has a bit of sauce in there uh probably cheese of course but it's like a, it's like creamy and it's a very good flavoring for our next item we're coming over to garlic kissed now when you need to pick up an item they have a pickup line and right now it is empty but as you can see it's a little long because they anticipate this item being the most popular if not one of the most popular items in the festival and so since there was no line we decided to get it now and since it's right next door, we'll also grab an item from Delish. So from Garlic Kissed, we have the grilled top sirloin that comes with mashed potatoes and a black chimichurri. It looks pretty green to me. And from Delish, we got the carbonara garlic mac and cheese, and it has a smoked applewood bacon or something like that on it. I don't have the actual description in front of me, and they don't have the full description in the little booklet, uh, but this looks really good. Amy's gonna start with the grilled top sirloin. Maybe. Maybe? It's like humongous bites. Mm. There is a reason this one makes it into our rotation every single year. Now we are trying to try some new items this year. A lot of the items we're getting today are going to be new. However, this is one. It's here every year for the food and wine festival and we usually end up getting this one, I feel like, a couple times over the whole entire food festival because it's just, it's that good. Wow. Yeah, I told you it was big bites. These are huge and they're dense too. Oh wow. yeah, when they handed me that thing, I was like, oh, this thing's heavy. <laughs> wow. That was pretty good. I mean, I expected it to be. This is the third year I think that we've gotten this item and it definitely needs to be on your list. Even if you've had it before, it needs to be on your list again. It's, it's just that good. Um, there are four pieces of meat in here and they're big and they're very filling. It's a, it's a fantastic value. 
considering how much you actually get in this. Sometimes I feel like they have an item that's like 850 and then it's such a pitiful little amount. It doesn't even fill you up. But I feel like this one item, if you ate it by yourself, it could fill you up. So the, the steak is not as tender as I would like it to be, but it's not tough either. It's still pretty easy to chew, just not quite as like melt in your mouth as I'd like it to be. It is packed with flavor, however, so that there's nothing wrong with it there. As far as the mashed potatoes go, they were pretty good. I'm not a big fan of the chimichurri that was on top. Uh, a little bit mixed in with the mashed potatoes was fine, but sometimes I got like more chimichurri than mashed potatoes and that aspect of it, I don't know, it just wasn't my favorite, but if I could keep like the chimichurri off to the side, it's definitely really good. Now I'm gonna try the carbonara mac and cheese. Mm. The little crunchies on top here add a very nice texture to the bite and the bacon adds just a nice hint of flavor to the mac and cheese to, to spice it up and make this a, a great item. I think there's some Parmesan cheese mixed in there as well. All this combined makes for a really good mac and cheese. It's not overpowering. It doesn't have like a, a super strong, unique flavor. So without the bacon and without like the crunchy bits, it would taste like regular mac and cheese. But um, all of it combined, this is, this is a really tasty item. Now Amy's gonna try it. Mm. You're right about the breadcrumbs on top. That's a very nice crunch. Um, yeah, this is good. I really like it. Um, I mean, I'm sure if you didn't have the garlic flavor in here, it would be noticeable. It doesn't seem to be like an overpowering garlic flavor though, so. That's nice. Something in there gives it a nice little bit of a kick yeah, because oh. I, have, I have like an aftertaste. Oh yeah, because when you, right when you said that, I was like, oh, there's a little kick. I wonder what it is though. I'm not sure. As the day goes on, the ordering lines get longer and longer. So I highly recommend that you order earlier on in the day. That line honestly wasn't too bad. It, it's not crazy busy. I have seen some of them get really long and you can save yourself a lot of time also, like I said, by pre-ordering all your items at one location. After splitting just three items, Amy and I feel that we are satisfied enough to not eat any more for the moment. So we're just gonna go walk around a bit and a little bit later on, we'll continue getting some items, but no time will pass for you guys. And we are coming for a little afternoon snack here at Cluckadoodle Moo. Now this item is an item that you all voted for online. We put it to a poll for you guys because we were having trouble figuring out what item we wanted. And this is the cheese pizza flavored chicken wings. Uh, it doesn't look any different than a normal chicken wing, but it's supposed to be flavored like a cheese pizza. So we'll see how it is. It smells like pizza. <laughs> see if it tastes like pizza. A subtle hint of pizza. Um, it's not very overpowering though. So thoughts? Um, it might need the ranch dressing. So maybe I'll try that in a minute, but it's kind of hard to dip wings and ranch. Anyway, it's slightly dry. So first impressions is that it's not I, juicy. I prefer the no, the chicken's okay. It's just there's not a lot of sauce oh, on top. Okay. So my first impression is that the ones actually from Poultry Palace I prefer. My turn. I like it. I don't think it's too dry. I mean, if you get a nice big bite, the meat is pretty tender and juicy. So. I don't know. I like it. Would I get this all the time? Probably not because I'm not the biggest person of, this is going to sound lazy, but I don't like eating around bones. I don't like any bit of food that I have to work for it. Like crab legs, I'd rather just eat the crab meat. I don't want to have to pull it out of the crab leg. Shrimp, I hate it when they have the, like the skin and the little feet on it. Cause I have to like peel all that off. And I don't know. <laughs> Anything that takes a little bit of work. I generally prefer like boneless chicken wings, but then that's just like a chicken nugget, right? <laughs> um, yeah, but I, think, I think it tastes good. But the real question is, does it taste like a cheese pizza? And the answer is no, N no, it does not. I mean, Amy said it was subtle and and yeah, it's, it's subtle. It's more like there's a seasoning on the chicken but the chicken itself just tastes like chicken. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Our next afternoon snack brings us to LA style. So we got the carnita style pork belly with a esquite corn mac salad. It looks pretty good. I, I'm excited to try this one. Am I supposed to mix these two together in one bite? I don't know, do what you think. 
The pork is really good, has a nice little kick to it, so uh, very tender. So now we'll see what the mac salad is like. Oh, that's got a kick to it too. Oh man. <laughs> Your face um, didn't seem to like it. The flavor is good. However, I wouldn't put this much mayo on mine. Like whenever I make, you know, anything similar to this, I put like half the amount of mayo it calls for. Um, one, to just make it a little bit healthier, too. Both of us aren't huge mayo people, so I'll see what you think of this, but it's very mayo-y. All right, pork belly for me. I really like that. Nice and tender, really good flavor, not overpowering. I didn't get any spice, so I'm not quite sure what you had. Um, I think I had a little bit of the spice from the mac salad maybe, stuck on it. Maybe, because I didn't get any spice on this. It was, it was a really nice flavor. I can't really describe it, I mean, it's pork tastes like what you think a pork belly would taste like, but it's just nice and tender and juicy. And, uh, it, it's great. Now the mac salad. Yeah, a little bit too much something. It's actually got a bit of like a pink look to it. And I don't know what that what's making it pink. If it's just like the seasoning on top here, or if it's something else that they mixed with the mayo. But I think that whatever the pink is, is what I'm not really that wild about. I would have just rather have had, I feel like, just a regular macaroni salad with this. I think that would have been the perfect side. And it sounds like, based on what I read earlier, that's what they used to have with this last yeah. year. And somebody was complaining that if it's not broke, don't, you know, don't <laughs> fix it. I would agree. And next up, we come to Nuts About Cheese. And here it is. This is another mac and cheese, this time the barbecue pulled pork mac and cheese. And we're gonna compare it to the carbonara from earlier. The pork is good. My only down side of it is that it's cold. Like the carbonara one was nice and hot, at least when we got it. But you think this one was just sitting for a while? It may have just been sitting for a while, it's hard to say. But the pork is very tender on here and the barbecue sauce has a nice little tang to it, so it's still really good. Okay, here we go. I see your point. The the noodles are a little warm at least, but the meat itself, yeah. The meat itself is not all that like temperature warm. I'm not really feeling this one. The carbonara mac and cheese is much, much better. So if you have to get just one mac and cheese, now I know the carbonara mac and cheese is like an item that they've had before. It's not new this year, but I mean, there's a reason they brought it back again, right? It's because it's that good. On another note, the little crunchy things, whatever they were on top of this thing, they were extremely salty. At least I think that's what was causing the salt, but there was just some bites that I had that were way too salty. I don't know if it was necessarily salt, but whatever flavoring those crunchy bits were bringing, they weren't a welcome one. Yeah. We started this day out with really, really good choices. And I feel like we've been getting worse as we pick. <laughs> And uh, the, the two that are remaining are, are both... the two vegan ones. They're vegan options. And most of the time I like vegan options here at Disneyland. But um, we, we bumped into David and Liz from Fresh Baked. And they were telling us that... Uh, the farm butts are... Not that great. And that's yeah. one of the items that we're getting. So, oh well. We'll see. We'll see. Another quick word on the churros. Now, the churros that we showed you in the video already were the only four official food and wine festival churros. But we have been walking around and some of the other churro carts do have specialty seasonal churros we've not seen before. One of them is over here at the Churro Cone at the Cozy Cone Motel. Just because they're not labeled food and wine, they still do have some that you should check out that are unique to this time frame. And here you're gonna find the banana split churro. So it doesn't really matter what time of year you come, any of these places that sell churros do have seasonal churros that they rotate on a regular basis. They always have one regular churro and one seasonal churro that changes about every two to three months or so. Now, for the most part today, we have just been enjoying our time together, riding rides without the kids being here. And we saw, hello. We saw that Soren has a single rider line, supposedly, but I don't even know how you go about getting into it. So we're going to ask. Well, they do, and we got this little ticket, and they asked us to follow him. So even though it's not marked, they do have single rider for Soren, and we're gonna see how it works. Oh, over here on the right-hand side. Wow, there's like nobody, nobody in the single rider line, at least up here anyway. We've never done single rider on Soren. 
And since it's far and over California and we don't have the kids, it's just the perfect opportunity to give it a test spin. But Amy said it was a 40 minute wait and we're coming down to the, the spot where you get put in like a line and it's only been like four minutes. Well, uh, Amy just got taken and I am uh, now here by myself. See, nobody, nobody here. So I probably won't make it on this viewing. Amy made it on uh, the viewing before me. So for her, the wait was like five minutes. Well, I just made it in. It has been 24 minutes and I am two full rides cycles behind Amy. Uh, so Amy and I were separated by two ride cycles, which I guess is seven minutes um, because it's about five minute video, but they have to like load and unload and things like that. So Amy was a full like 14, 15 minutes ahead of me. But it was still shorter than... Yeah, 26. I was sitting down on the ride at 26 and it was posted at 40, so it was still faster. Uh, if you have a large group, it's not a good idea because they only get like one single rider every, every, yeah. Yeah, every couple of times. So definitely not a good use of single rider compared to some of the others. But we got to ride Soarin' Over California. And the orange scrubs were so nice. My favorite part is the jet planes because it's so loud in the theater. It literally like rumbles through your chest. I love it. it it's great. Yeah, Love Soarin' Over California. Wish you would stick around around here. Yeah, seriously. Like, Disney, uh, please just keep it here, okay? Epcot please, can have soaring around the world. We'll, we'll ride it during our, you know, yearly Walt yeah. Disney World trips. And for our final booth of what we're getting here today for the Food and Wine Festival is over here at Earth Eats, right across from LA Style that we visited earlier. Well, we're going to start with the chicken parm bites because um, after talking with David from Fresh Baked, he reminded me that these are the same vegan chicken bites that we had at um, the Festival of Holidays, which I didn't really like, except for it was in a curry at that time. And since this is chicken parm, I'm, I'm hopeful that this is better. But uh, we also got the beef stroganoff, which is also another vegan item. Uh, impossible beef stroganoff so I'm hoping that the beef stroganoff is it will will make up for if this ends up being terrible well Amy is gonna have the first bite on these <laughs> she has to take a second bite that's not a good sign folks it's not terrible it just tastes like an overcooked chicken nugget so that's just really in the way that it's prepared not necessarily and you're not commenting on the flavor of the item the sauce, it needs the sauce. I just put it that way. Well, if I these, figured. If these were plain, I mean, I don't even know if I'd dip these in barbecue sauce. Like, the fact that there's, like, at least some marinara sauce here helps. All right, here we go. I'm, I'm curious. So the one that I just ate was coated in marinara and Parmesan cheese, and it was very good. Much better than the curry that I had for Festival of Holidays. I will say that the first, like, flavor hit was really good. And then by the end, I did feel that the nugget was a little tough. Like, kind of like you said, like a little bit overcooked per se. Definitely mixing it with the marinara and the Parmesan cheese though. I, it's bearable. It's, it's better than I thought it would be. Let's put it that way. Now Amy's gonna give some of the uh, impossible beef stroganoff a try. This one's decent. That one's decent? Yeah, this one's decent. It could use a little bit more sauce. Like it's not very saucy like I'm used to with stroganoff, but um, I think because it's the impossible meat, I mean, I guess the chicken is too, but I guess because it's the impossible beef type meat, yeah. and we've had that before with Pim's and a couple other places, this is, this is good. So you were worried this was going to be one of the worst items of the day. Uh, how would you compare it to that barbecue pulled pork mac and cheese? Because I know you didn't really like that one all that much either. Um, better or worse? I feel like this one might actually be a little bit better. Okay. It's a little bit moister. Um, and it doesn't have that like over salty, whatever that flavor was that we kept getting with the, mac the pork mac and cheese. So. You, you used the, the M word. I know. I'm sorry. I said moist. <laughs> I've been trying to avoid that word all day. <laughs> it's more saucy. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not the biggest sour cream person. And the fact that there's sour cream all over the top of this is, you know, a little nervous. Like, makes me a little nervous. But we'll, we'll give some of this a try here. With or without, uh, the sour cream isn't overpowering. It's just a nice little drizzle on top. Still probably not my preference, but the mushrooms in here have a really nice flavoring. Now, I love mushrooms. I like mushrooms on pizza. I like to mushrooms on steak. I like mushrooms on a lot of things. And a lot of people don't like mushrooms. Here in the beef stroganoff, I think it adds a nice little flavor. Um, yeah, I, I think this is a good item, like you said. It probably is better than the pulled pork mac and cheese. Now, let me preface that by saying, if the meat 
and the mac and cheese had actually been hot and warm, I think that would have beat this. And, and this honestly isn't very much temperature warm either. This is pretty cold. And yes, I'm a vlogger and, and yes, I, I film the footage before I eat it, but we're talking 30 seconds to 60 seconds max. I've done that with all the foods and the carbonara mac and cheese was still piping hot as were some of the other items that we got. So uh, the fact that these are temperature cold, I feel like just means they've been sitting in the booth. The booth's right here behind me. Just been sitting in the booth and, and that's kind of a bummer. But that's why I feel like when we eat multiple times throughout a festival, like over the course of two months, sometimes we'll get varying results. Didn't we get the steak tips like three times one year and every single time it was different? Yeah, we had one time where, you know, it was perfect, it was hot, like kind of like today. We had another time where we barely got any steak, it felt like, or it was just smaller pieces, so it didn't feel like it was as much. Um, so yeah, they're kind of inconsistent with some of those food items. I actually noticed already that the steak is being served on a plate right now instead of the little like bowl like we got already, and that's just today. I think the only ones you're gonna stay consistent with are the things like the macarons, you know, and stuff that are already like pre-made. Pre yeah. Surprise, we're getting one more item. An item that uh, I probably shouldn't get because it's got sugar in it, but I'm gonna get it anyway. And here it is, the pistachio cheesecake. You know how much I love cheesecake, so we're gonna give it a try. And I have walked 28,000 steps today to earn said cheesecake. And I have to go back to the car still. I've walked 30,000, so I've walked more. <laughs> That's only because you have littler legs, so it takes you longer to get places. And I walked during, while he was riding on Soren too. I walked for 10 minutes. Well, there's that. Okay, here we go. You know, I've learned that I say, here we go a lot. If I, if you think I don't say, here we go a lot, it's because I edited it out, but here we go. I'm trying to decide what it tastes like. It's good. Like cheesecake like, with pistachios on it? I would have liked a little bit of like almond flavor in here because then it would taste like spumoni, but it doesn't quite taste like spumoni, but uh, it's pretty good actually. I got a big bite with some pistachios on the top. Yeah. It tastes like New York cheesecake to me. Maybe a slight variation on New York cheesecake, but yeah, it's it's literally like a New York cheesecake with a pistachio on top. I was hoping for pistachio flavored cheesecake, kind of like the pumpkin cheesecake that I had for Festival of Holidays, but no. This is just pistachios on top of the cheesecake. A little disappointing, a little bit of a letdown, but it's still good because I love cheesecake, so I'm not gonna complain, I'm gonna eat it. Oh, and um, we paid for this a la carte because I used my annual pass holder discount uh, at the Paradise Garden Grill since they accept it there. And I was able to get a dollar off of this. So it was like $6 with tax. And that is not worth it on the Sip and Saver Pass. Even though this item is Sip and Saver eligible, remember you are paying at least, if you're a Magic Key holder, $7 per item. So if you use the Magic Key or if you use the Sip and Saver Pass for anything under $7, you are actually losing money. So we actually just paid for this a la carte, and um, yeah, it's pretty good. And that officially marks all of the food items that we are gonna get for this video. Which one was your favorite? Mm -hmm. I really always like the grilled top sirloin. My favorite was the carbonara mac and cheese, I think because it reminds me a little bit of my favorite uh, stuffing mac and cheese that they used to have at Festival of Holidays and they didn't bring back this year and I'm still disappointed about that. Disney, if you're watching, which I know you're not, but if you are, please bring back my stuffing mac and cheese. But the carbonara was a pretty good one. Do you have a favorite new item though? Yeah, not really. Yeah. Yeah, they, they were okay. Uh, I mean, nothing was bad. No. Nothing was bad. Even the thing that I was expecting to kind of be bad, what, based on, yeah, yeah, it yeah, still ended up really still ended up being pretty decent. The sauce was good. Yeah, I, I think this overall was a pretty good uh, food and wine festival, and I know that we will be eating more items here over the next two months. So just keep an eye out on our videos. It's not going to be any official like food and wine video from here on out. This is it, but the, you'll you'll see food you know, in our, our family vlogs and things like that. And that's it for our time here today for Food and Wine Festival. If you enjoyed this video, remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Click this video to keep watching. Thanks for watching, and we will see you again next time.